Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. I wanted to come out and share with you uh, some dreams that I've been given over the past week uh, and a warning message, I believe, and just share with you the things that the Holy Spirit is imparting into my spirit concerning the condition of the church and some things about Israel that uh, we really need to be interceding about and uh, possibly the one dream I was given is a confirmation uh, that we are approaching the time of the, the rapture. And uh, so I'm going to share these dreams and I'm going to share with you what I believe the Lord is showing me. Now, the first two dreams I was given, uh, one on July 31st of 24 and one on August 1st of 24. I'm not going to go into the details of those two dreams, but basically the gist of those dreams, the Lord was showing me that the church is divided looking that the interests of the church are looking in different areas focused on different things not really interested in one another it's divided and it's it's self-centered okay and then i was also shown where the church had been abandoned by leadership okay and so i was i was called in this dream to to step up to the plate and uh, kind of do some leadership in this small fellowship so i feel like this just all points to Again, the condition of the church. Okay, so the dreams that I had the past uh, few nights, probably three, four nights ago, these two dreams, I believe, are speaking to something that is coming concerning Israel. And I didn't know that until the second, the follow-up dream I was given. Okay, so the first dream uh, was on August 5th. Now, in this dream, I was in my childhood neighborhood, standing on a street called Haven Street. So this means Haven, a safe place. And I looked up in the sky, I saw that there was a big storm coming. The clouds just looked really ominous. And so I was uh, standing there on the other side of the street. I wasn't on the same side as my father's house, the house I grew up in. So I saw my sister Mary who had passed away a couple years ago. She was driving up the street and she was yelling out the window to me. And I said, hey, you need to get home, a storm is coming. And so I crossed over the street. Now this all has, I believe, meaning. Um, and I went to my father's house and I looked up in the sky before I went in and I knew a big storm was about to hit. And I said, something bad is about to happen. Something bad is about to happen. And so I went in the house. As soon as I went in the house, it was like it became dark and it started raining and the storm hit. Okay, so the symbology there, I. It, it very well may parallel uh, the gathering of the church, you know, the storm coming, the dead in Christ rising first, my sister who passed away going home first, and then me crossing over, uh, going into my father's house. And it may not mean that, but the thing with that dream is that night before I went to sleep, I was praying about the timing of the rapture. And I was just asking the father if the timing that I have in mind is wrong to correct me on it, but if it's not to give me a confirmation. And I felt like that dream could be a confirmation that that time is coming, okay? Because we know the word harpazo, it literally means to really quickly pull somebody out of uh, harm's way, out of danger. And that storm was just about to hit. And the crossing over, you know, symbolic of like the Red Sea crossing over. So anyway, but it could just be something bad that's about to happen. We all go to our father's home. We all find uh, a place of safety in the the presence of our heavenly father all right that's our safe place jesus the father that's our only safe place there is no safe place in this world all right so in the next dream which was either one or two nights later i had this dream where i was in something like a an apartment or a uh, like a hotel room and i was with my mom my dad and my brother now my mom symbolizes israel she, the, the israel being the mother of the church and of course, my dad, my heavenly father, and my brother people I work with closely in ministry. So in, the, in that dream, I knew it was going to get hot, like things were heating up. And so I, there was a ceiling fan. So I reached up to pull the cord of the ceiling fan to turn it on. And the whole ceiling fan unit dropped into my hands. And I was like, this is what I said, what just happened? I'm holding this ceiling fan unit in my hands going, what just happened? Now, to me, that statement 
coincides with the statement I made the day before, the night before, where I said something bad is about to happen. I didn't know what the bad thing was, but something bad. So this ceiling fan, I believe, is symbolic of that bad thing that's about to happen. The next scene, I went out into the hallway because I said, well, I, I can get another fan. I'm, gonna, I'm going to go get another fan. And I thought about it because I knew it was going to take some work. I didn't know how easy it would be, but whatever. I was like going to go get another fan. But I said there was like a, a um, some type of a unit, an air conditioning unit in the window. And I told my mom, use that for now. So I went to go get a fan, went out in the hallway. So I'm, I'm walking down the hall. There's three women. All right. One is a, a form. She was the a wife of a pastor. She was standing there with her daughter and her daughter's daughter, three gen, three generations. And they were all dressed up, like looked really fancy. And they were standing in front of an ATM, like a cash stream, a money machine. And they were waiting to get money. That was their focus. And when I turned back around to come back past them I saw them and I waved at them I was like hey how you doing and they just totally ignored me I looked down and I was like wearing pajamas or something I looked really goofy and uh, I could tell they were ashamed of me they they didn't want uh, anyone to know they knew me and so they just totally ignored me all right so in that dream the Lord is showing us that basically three generations of the church have been looking to money as their God, focused on money. We know this is going on. The prosperity gospel is rampant. There's a lot of preachers, teachers that are just, that's all they care about is, is money. They don't care about each other. They don't care about the sheep. It's just making money. And so when you look at the dream and the meaning of that dream, now I talked to my friend Rhonda about this and um, we walked through it and unpacked it together. And so I believe that ceiling fan that fell into my hands is symbolic of the bad thing that was going to happen, which when you break it down is the, the ceiling fan produces wind. Wind is symbolic of the, of the Holy Spirit, it's symbolic in the Holy Spirit power, anointing, all right, a covering. And I was reaching up, okay, like symbolic of the remnant church interceding seeking some kind of relief from the heat for israel things are going to heat up in israel and as the remnant church try i was interceding trying to help get relief but the problem is it all fell apart it fell into my hands now this this is speaking to i believe some biblical prophecies that are coming where israel will stand alone and i believe because the church's condition is so poor that is why we are uh, not going to be able to to help Israel when that time comes. And it could also mean that we, we will not even be here. Um, the church may very well be taken out of the way at that point, the remnant church. But when you look at the biblical prophecies that tell us Israel's going to stand alone, we know that day is coming. And I believe that is the bad thing that is about to happen that, that I was being warned of. And Back on Monday, the day I had that dream, uh, which was 8-5, October, or I'm sorry, August 5th, that was the day that Iraq was hit and there were five casualties on that, that base, the um, on that military base in Iraq. So now we know that Israel is contemplating a preemptive attack on Iran. There's just all kinds of things going on over there right now leading to war things are heating up but i feel like now uh the lord is warning that that time is not going to be able to uh be reversed like we are we are reaching these the time of these prophecies that were spoken of by by zechariah and the prophet micah zechariah 12 uh, chapter 12 verses 2 and 3 tells us behold i am going to make jerusalem a cup that causes staggering to all the peoples around and when the siege is against Jerusalem, it will also be against Judah. It will come about on that day that I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples. All who lift it will injure themselves severely. And then there's Zechariah 14:2. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished. 
And then Micah chapter 5, verse 3, the people of Israel will be abandoned to their enemies until the woman in labor gives birth. We know that day is coming, but we as the church have been, I believe, standing in the gap and praying and interceding. And that has been what I believe that's that fan, that uh, covering of the Holy Spirit over Israel has been, um, we've been a part of keeping that running by prayer and intercession for Israel. But the time is coming when that's just gonna fall apart because for whatever reason, either because of the condition of the church or because the remnant church is taken out and there's just nobody to stand in the gap for Israel. And so I just encourage you church to take all of this to the Lord in prayer. While we're here, we need to be praying. We need to be interceding, standing in the gap uh, for all the peoples of the earth, uh, but especially Israel. And we know that uh, Israel, that day will come when she's going to come into faith in her Messiah during the tribulation, Jacob's trouble, that seven year period of time when God is gonna deal with Israel and bring her into faith in Christ. But until then, there's gonna be a lot of turmoil and war. And it seems that we may be at that point where there's no turning back. But until that time, let's just pray church. And again, take this to the Lord in prayer, ask him for confirmations and, uh, and just be praying for Israel and pray for the body of Christ that the condition of the church is just, it's so bad, it's so divided and it doesn't, it doesn't honor our savior. It doesn't honor the Lord for us to be self-focused and just divided in so many different ways and looking to our own interests. The Bible is very clear about how we are to be concerned with one another, uh, considering others better than ourselves. Jesus, of course, his command was to love one another as I have loved you. He said, so you must love one another. And by this, all men will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. And, and that is critical for us right now to be walking in love church when Jesus prophesied that in the end times, the love of most would grow cold. So let's keep seeking the Lord, seeking his heart of love and asking that that love would manifest in and through us in this dark time. Uh, because it may be the only light, it may be the only love that anybody sees around them. It is rare, it is rare. But let's continue, church, to keep walking closely with the Lord until the day he takes us home to be with him forever. And we know that is a promise, it is our blessed hope, and we continue to look to him for that and trust him for his perfect time. All right, as always, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.